Let me just set myself up here. I'm a little sick, so I kind of sound like Kermit the Frog right now. Um, but did you guys start summer today? Who started summer today? Do you guys, who's still in school or still has school? No one? Happy summer, guys. How's everyone doing? Good. Um, so before I start talking your ear off, I just want to say you guys have amazing leaders here. Colin and Jen specifically have been mentors in my life since I started high school. And I just like owe a lot of my ministry, a lot of what I get to do now to them. So I just want to honor you guys. If you could give it up for them. Well, thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to be talking. So Colin kind of said a little bit about myself, but my name is Juana. I'm 21 years old. I just graduated college, and I also just started my master's, so I didn't really stop doing any school. And uh, I started coming to Oasis when I was like in eighth grade. I came here all throughout high school, and then I moved away to college. And um, today I get to continue the sermon series that Colin kicked off last week, Rip to the Old Me. And this is kind of like shedding off old skin, getting rid of old habits, getting rid of bad mentality. And today I'll be talking about Rip to the Old Me, Victim Mentality, which is really funny. When Colin told me the topic, we kind of just both laughed because it was something I struggled with with a lot of my life. And Colin and Jen, knowing a lot of my struggles in life, um, I was constantly finding myself in this victim mentality, but I feel like victim mentality sounds like a negative word, like sounds like it has a negative connotation, but really what it is, it's like when you feel helpless, you know when you have a really, really bad day and you feel like everything is against you, you feel like you can't win. And so I have a couple scenarios in which I felt like the victim. The first one was, anyone here an older sibling? Yeah, okay, so oftentimes, when me and my brother, his name is Juan, my name is Juana, um, when we would get into fights, I would always get in trouble because I was the older sibling. And so my mom would be like, did you hit him? I was like, no. Okay, I did, but I, I, it's not my fault. I shouldn't be pegged for this. Or another instance that I felt like my world was crumbling before me was like about a year ago, it was finals week, and finals week in college is crazy. Everyone is absolutely losing their mind. And it was like 11 p.m. I'd been studying for three days straight, no sleep. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go to McDonald's and I'm going to get a snack. So I drive to the nearest McDonald's near my college. And I'm sitting there for like five minutes and no one's talking to me. And I was like, okay, what's going on? Hello. I soon realized the McDonald's is closed. And so I was like, okay, let me drive to a further McDonald's. So it's like 1130. I'm going out of my way to get McDonald's. And I'm like, okay, hi. Um, could I have an m and McFlurry? Because everyone knows that the m and McFlurry is better than the Oreo McFlurry. And so I was like, okay, can I have an m and McFlurry? They're like, sorry, we're out of m and M's. I was like, okay, um, could I have a, an ice cream cone? And they're like, oh, we're out of waffle cones. I was like, oh, that, that's fine. Um, could I have, I'll settle for the Oreo McFlurry. And they're like, actually, our ice cream machine is broken. And I was like, well, you know, you could have started with that, would have saved us a lot of time. It's okay, can I get, McDonald's now has these like slushies. So I was like, could I get blue raspberry slushy? They're like, actually all of our frozen machines are down. And I was like, okay, can I get some chicken nuggets? And she starts her sentence and I just leave because I was scared for, to lose my salvation if I had to continue a conversation with her. And so this is, these are funny instances that I felt like the victim. I felt like everything was against me, but there's serious scenarios where we feel like the victim, like we're left out of a friend group or maybe life at home is really hard or we're struggling with something and no one knows. And the issue with being in a victim mentality is we feel absolutely helpless. And so when I was thinking about this message and I was thinking about who I could talk about or how we could learn from someone. I was reminded of the story of Joseph. And so I'll go through the story of his life a little bit. And so it starts in Genesis 37. And Joseph is 17 years old, and he is favored by his father, Jacob. And so he's like the password kid in the family. Like all the passwords are, are his birthday. And so for a long time, I was the password kid in the family. And as we grew older, my brother now is the favored kid. And so I'm very jealous of him. And I don't know if that's because my parents love him more now or they, they hate me more and I don't really want to focus on what the reason is. But Joseph is the, uh, the password kid in the family and so his brothers despise him. And not even four verses into scripture we see in verse four. It says, 
But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak to him peacefully. So, okay, Joseph knows all his brothers hate him. And we continue, and then Joseph starts to have these set of dreams. And so he has this dream, and he tells his brother his dream. And his brothers take it as, like, an offense. They take it as, like, you think you're better than me. And so we see in verse 8, the brothers say to him, are you indeed to reign over us? Are you indeed to rule over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. And then Joseph has another dream. And so he goes and he tells his siblings and he's like, hey, I had another dream. And then boom, verse 11, and his brothers were jealous of him. And so I would like to call Joseph's life a series of unfortunate events. He just is constantly hated by his brothers. He's constantly hated. And so it continues and it kind of gets worse. We see in verse 18 to 19, it says, they saw him from afar and before he came near, they conspired against him to kill him. They said to one another, here comes this dreamer. Come, on, come now, let us kill him and let us throw him into one of the pits. Then we will say that a fierce animal has devoured him and we will see what will come of his dreams. So we see here, they're basically kind of mocking his dreams. They're like, oh, this dreamer thinks he's all that, like we're just gonna kill him, that's the obvious solution. And so as we continue in the story of Joseph's life, we learn that he begins to work for this guy named Potiphar. And he's his servant, and Potiphar's wife becomes very fond of Joseph. Joseph is this handsome guy, and Potiphar's wife gets a little bit PG-13 and, and is like, hey, can you, can you, like, lay with me? Like, basically, like, making moves on Joseph. And Joseph's like, no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm not going to sin against my master, but also God. And so she gets upset and accuses him of still making a move on her, and he's thrown in prison. And so Joseph was thrown in a pit, and he was thrown in prison. And so we see his life is constant unfair treatment, constant hatred, constant jealousy, constant physical abuse, mental abuse. And I think no matter how we paint the picture, Joseph is the victim in every single one of the scenarios. He never does anything wrong. But the, it, the difference between what I would have done if I was Joseph to what Joseph does is Joseph never complains, he never sins, he never tries to blame it on someone else, he never tries to excuse himself, he just continues uh, being obedient to what God has for him. And so I want to point out the things that Joseph does that makes him not fall into this victim mentality because I think it would be easy for Joseph to live the life he was living and be like, I, everyone's just against me. I do nothing and everyone's against me. And the first thing I notice Joseph does is he takes responsibility. I think a lot of times when I'm stuck in victim mentality, I'm like, well, if everyone's against me, I'm just not going to do anything and I'm just going to lay in my bed and I'm just... Like, the world is against me. There's no point in me trying to do anything. But Joseph takes responsibility for the calling God has over his life, what he felt like he needed to do, and he also takes responsibility for the consequences he didn't deserve. So we see that he takes, he takes on the, res the responsibility of, like, okay, I was accused of this. Although I know I didn't do it, I'm still going to go to prison. He didn't fight back. The next thing Joseph does is that he takes action. And I think Joseph was given sin on a silver platter. He was given temptation so easily. He, he like, was given this pleasure, and I feel like a lot of times when we have this victim mentality, we're like, okay, if the world is against me and nothing is going right, then, like, I'll just give in to doing this because, like, I'm not enjoying life anyways. You know what I mean? And Joseph was given the sin, this pleasure that he could have given to with Potiphar's wife, but he chooses to reject it. He chooses to obey God. And I'm telling you these things Joseph does, and I feel like it would be really easy for me to come and tell you and be like, hey, so um, this is what you need to do. You need to take responsibility, take action, and the band can come up, and then we pray, and then we can leave. And that's awesome. But it, I'm not really giving you anything because a lot of times – when we have victim mentality, like, it feels like we're helpless. It feels like there's nothing we could do. So you're like, Juana, I don't want to do anything about it. Like, there's nothing I need to take responsibility for. There's nothing I need to take action for. And I think it's super easy to be in Joseph's position and really believe that the world is against us, really believe 
and truly have circumstances where we not only feel like the victim, but we are the victim. Um, and as I mentioned before, I graduated college, and I think throughout all of my high school life, I, I struggled a lot, um, and I was constantly in the state of victim mentality. I, I constantly felt like the world was against me, and I remember I would sit in these seats, and I would serve every week, and I would do everything that I thought would check off the boxes, and I would do everything, and I would be in worship, and I would go to small groups, and then I would go to class, and I would be in my parents, and I was doing all this stuff, and I would still sit in my bed at the end of the day and feel unseen, unheard, and unprotected by God. And I was like, God, my life genuinely is never going to get better. My life is like Joseph, but I can't do anything about it. There's no way, my li like, there's no light at the end of the tunnel. And I feel like that's what victim mentality does. It tells us there's nothing you could do to get better. And so I spent years of my life struggling with my mental health. And then I started struggling with self-harm. And then I started struggling with my body image. And then I had really, really bad eating habits. And then after that, I got diagnosed with anxiety. And then I got diagnosed with this other thing. And I was like, man, I just literally cannot catch a break. Like, it feels like it, it's never ending. This, this pain, I'm never going to get out of it. And I left high school. And I went into college. And I was like, OK, I could start new. I could start fresh. And then yet still, I was still stuck in this mentality and it, it wouldn't go away and I was like okay let me change my friend group and then it still wouldn't go away and anything I did didn't change the fact that I felt like the victim and I felt so stuck and for some reason all these years of being in this victim mentality was so much easier than doing what Joseph did I was almost comfortable being able to lay in my bed for days and like not take responsibility for what was going on in my life and this victim mentality almost paralyzed me with fear and anxiety, and it was easier to feel this fear and anxiety and sadness than do what Joseph did. And I think that's because what's so hard about steps one and two, take action and take responsibility, is because it's almost impossible if we don't realize step three. So one, take responsibility. Two, take action. And the last step is take heart. Going back to Joseph's life, at the end of Joseph's story, he's actually chosen and appointed highly. He's given like this high position and he's appointed by a king and his brothers come to him and they ask for forgiveness and they ask for reconciliation. And Joseph's life basically ends up being way better than anyone could have ever imagined. Um, Joseph has a really great life and I don't think he ever expected that to happen but he did know this one promise. And so we look at this conversation he's having with his brothers in Genesis 50, 19, and he's responding to his brothers, asking him for his forgiveness. And he says, do not fear, for I am in the place of God. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. And what I think we tend to forget a lot of the time is at the end of the day, the rejection that Joseph experienced the hurt that he experienced, the rejection that me and you experience every day is actually protection from God because ultimately God chose Joseph and he knew this from the beginning of his life. And so taking heart means we don't have to worry about what our situation is. We don't have to worry about what this victim mentality is telling us because we actually know the end of the story. We know it's like watching a movie and you know the ending and you know it's a happy ending. Like the whole time you're not worried. You're not at the edge of your seat because you know how the story ends. And so resting on the promise of taking heart is resting of the, on the promise of John 16, 33. I have said these things to you that you and me may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart for I have overcome the world. And I feel like a lot of times bad things happen in our lives and we're like, okay, um, what do I do and why is this happening to me? And God, like, what, why do bad things happen to good people? Like, I'm, I'm obeying you and I'm listening to my parents and I'm doing everything I have to do. And taking heart and what God tells us, God never tells us you're not going to be the victim. In fact, God lets us know, hey, you're going to have affliction. You're going to struggle. You're going to have hard days. You're going to have things that happen to you that are unfair, but you could take heart and have the peace of knowing that we've already won. Have the peace of knowing that at the end of the day, you're going to be fine because Jesus won. And I think if we have the example of Joseph, who was 
a victim. And we have the example of our own testimonies that I'm sure every single one of you have felt like a victim before in their life. And then we have the example of the ultimate victim, which was Jesus Christ, who died on a cross and was humiliated and was beaten and had the most historical brutal death that ever were to exist, die on a cross for us because he loved us enough to do so. We could also rest in knowing that we don't have to identify with our struggles or anxiety or our sadness or our friend group or school or whatever that hard situation is for you. Whatever the thing that makes you feel so helpless is for you, we don't have to identify with that. We could take action, take responsibility, and ultimately take promise in the eternal life we've been given through Jesus. And so then this victim mentality can turn into a victory mentality. I think it's fair to say that everyone has fallen in the trap of victim mentality at one point or another. And it feels so harsh to be like, oh, you're having a victim mentality. But it honestly is just like, I just feel like I have nothing to give. I feel like I can't try. Like, I, I can't get out of bed. I don't want to go to school. I don't want to deal with the situation. Like, I just don't want to do any of it. But I want you guys to know that there's a God who sees you and who hears you and who protects you. And in addition to all of that, he wants to have an intimate and eternal relationship with you. And so with every eye closed in this room, um, I'm just going to pray. If this is the first time maybe you're hearing about Jesus or this is the first time that um, you maybe want to enter in a relationship with Jesus, I hope you know that, first of all, it is the greatest experience that you could ever have, and it's the greatest relationship you could ever have. It will lead to goodness. It will lead to finally feeling fulfilled because nothing in this world will ever make you feel that way. And no matter your situation, you're going to feel hope. You're going to know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. You're going to know that you're not helpless. And so if that's you in the room, in the secret of your own heart, or if you want to slip up your hand, you can, but you don't have to. And then if you're in this room and you've been a victim a victim mentality. You have had this mentality of I'm helpless. Nothing could ever get me out of the situation. Nothing could ever change what's going on. Juana, you just don't know my situation. You don't know how hard it is at home. You don't know how hard it is to be with my friends. You don't know how hard it is to struggle and no one knows. I want you to know that there's a God that wants to heal you and has actually already won that battle for you. I believe wholeheartedly that a relationship with Jesus and fully trusting him changes your life. And so, dear God, we thank you so much that we don't have to worry about being a victim because you see us, you hear us, and you protect us. In the moments that are hard and in the moments that we see no way out, help us to remember that we've already won and that the battle belongs to you. Thank you for the blessing of never having to worry about any of our situations. And in your name we pray. Amen.